Hi, my name is Chris Norman, also known as Nose. I'm one of the co-authors of the GURPS Game Aid for Foundry. We are pleased to announce that we've been given the go-ahead to create the Nordland Bestiary Compendium for Foundry. What does this mean for you? Well, if you play GURPS and you own Foundry Virtual Tabletop, the Bestiary will give you instant access to the Nordland monsters, fully statted out with art assets and links to the lore in the PDF. If you don't own Foundry, then continue to watch this video and see how easy it is to play GURPS online. Foundry is a recent entry into the virtual tabletop arena, but it's gaining massive popularity because of its incredible extensibility and community support. There are over 150 different game systems to choose from and over a thousand community supported add-on modules, all free. Foundry has a one-time cost of $50 and no subscription fees. The GURPS Game Aid for Foundry is one of the free open source game systems that makes it very easy to play GURPS online. The only downside is that you have to enter in your own content, but that's where Gaming Ballistic comes to the rescue. With the release of their Nordland Bestiary Compendium, you'll be able to drag and drop fully fleshed out creatures in a matter of seconds. So how does this work? Well, let me walk you through a portion of a gaming session to show you how you could play GURPS online and where the Bestiary Compendium can save you a lot of time. As with all games in GURPS, you need to create characters. We suggest either using the GURPS Character Assistant or GURPS Character Sheet. Once your characters are created, you can export them and import them into Foundry. Here are two characters I have in GCS, and I will export one, import it into Foundry, then attach a picture, and add a token image. And I'll do that again for the second character. Great, now I have two characters. Of course, now I need NPCs, creatures, opponents, bad guys, you know what I mean. And that's gonna take some time. And this is where the Gaming Ballistic Bestiary will come in very handy. After you've installed the Compendium in Foundry, you can go to the Compendium tab and select the Nordland Bestiary and Enemies. A complete list of all the monsters will appear. This is the prototype, so we don't have the complete list, but I can show you the troll You'll have to ask Douglas exactly how to pronounce this name. But here's the troll. You can look over the character sheet. You notice how it looks like the book? And if you decide this is the creature you want to add into your world, you just press the import button. And then you can drag it onto the map. It's just that quick. So let me show you a few rounds of combat so you can see how the GURPS game aid works. We'll select these three tokens and bring them into combat. And then we'll right click the encounter tab to uh, open up a combat tracker. I like to have them separate. And we'll determine the turn order. Lady Serial goes first, so she's gonna take a step and attack. Let me open up her character sheet and we're gonna swing with the broadsword. But I noticed that the troll has a size modifier of plus two and you can see how it highlights. That means it's a button. If I click on it, it will add a plus two down into our modifier bucket. This is an area where we collect up all the modifiers and these numbers get applied to the next roll. GURPS is all about adding and subtracting numbers from your roll. And this is how we do it in the GURPS game aid. So now that Lady Serial has the plus two in our modify bucket, we're gonna roll against her broadsword. And you can see in the chat log that she hits. So now the troll has to defend. Parry and dodge are the same, so I'll just roll parry. And he fails. So now Lady Serial gets to roll damage. Ooh, not much damage. In the GURPS game aid, you apply damage by dragging this section of the damage chat message onto either the token, the character sheet, or the entry in the combat tracker. And I'll do that here. I'll drop it on this character sheet. And that brings up the apply damage dialog. This is the jewel of the GURPS game aid. This does a lot of the math for you, and you get to pick how much of it you want to apply. You don't have to play with all of the GURPS rules. You can just play with some of them. But right now we're taking some of the defaults. It's attacking the torso, and the troll has DR of four on the torso. We've only done three points of damage, so basically nothing makes it past the armor. So there's nothing to apply. Although I will apply it just so you can see that you got nothing. All right, so now it's the troll's turn, and he's right there. He's just going to swing. So you notice on the character sheet, these things highlight, so I can click on them and roll them. And uh, he's going to roll the pole arm, see if he can hit. 
Oh yeah, he hits. So now it's Lady Serial, and uh, she's got to do something. Well, she could try to dodge. Her dodge is a seven right now because she's wearing the armor. Although, GURPS rules say that if you're holding a shield and they're coming from the front, then you get a plus one to your dodge, but that still only brings it to an eight. She could parry, that's a 10. And it turns out that if she's parrying while she has a shield, she gets a plus one, but I don't actually have a button here to do that. Well, this is one of the other features in the GURPS game aid. We understand that you're having to add and subtract modifiers from rolls all the time. So this modifier bucket is actually a tooltip. If I mouse over this, this tooltip pops up. And in here, we have the current list of modifiers, uh, who's currently selected, and then a bunch of standard attack modifiers, and then just a whole bunch of other modifiers in here that you can pick. And, uh, or just down here, some generic modifiers. So I could just say, well, okay, I'm at a plus one. So now there's a plus one and she can roll parry. Oh no, she missed. Okay, so now it goes back to the troll and the troll's gonna do some damage. Ah, oh, that's big damage. So we're gonna grab this, drag it on to Lady Serial. Now I could drag it onto her token. I think I'll do that just for the heck of it. And uh, uh, yeah, this is gonna hurt bad. She's only got three points of armor and it's cutting and going through. It's gonna do an injury of 18. So I'm gonna apply the injury. And by the way, it's telling you if you play with the shock rules that uh, you would have a minus four to shock. And uh, if you're uncertain what these are, this is actually a link to the PDF. So if you own the basic set PDF and then you configure it and we give instructions on how to do that, then you can click this link and it will take you to that page and show you the rules. This amount of damage is also a major wound and the same thing, you could go check out the rules there. And if by pressing this button, it actually uh, puts a little chat notice in the chat log to help you remember some things you're gonna do. So uh, I'll, I'll click this. So it shows some information about the shock and then I'll click this to show, hey, these are rolls that you'd have to make uh, because this is a major wound. But before I apply the damage, let me show you. Here's Lady Serial and she has 15 hit points. Well, let's apply the injury. Uh, no, she has minus three hit points now. But first she has to roll HT to avoid stun or knockdown. Now she doesn't have low pain threshold, but she does have high pain threshold. So I can click that and you see in the modifier bucket, she now gets the plus three and I'm gonna roll against her HT. So I'll go up here to where HT is and roll. And she makes it. So she's not stunned or knocked down. That's great. But she is in pretty bad shape. If I mouse over this, it shows you that she's past reeling and to collapse. So actually I can turn on reeling, which will, uh, let's see. It'll have her move and dodge because she's in bad shape. Assuming she can stay awake, uh, I don't know if she's gonna survive this encounter. Okay, so we'll go to the next turn. So you see what Ilva can do. So I'll close off Old Lady Serial and open up Ilva. Now she's gonna do the same thing. She gets a plus two because of the size modifier. If you're gonna do a lot of things repeatedly, you can actually drag them to the macro bar at the bottom. So if she's gonna attack with her long sword, uh, swing two-handed and always get the plus two size modifier, I can drag this size modifier down here to one of the macro buttons and it puts it in here. Uh, this is actually a chat macro. We have a huge language, a huge chat language, along with a huge on the fly. Oh, I haven't shown you on the fly yet. Well, I'll have to show you that. But we have a huge library of on the fly formats that allow you to basically create buttons on your character sheet on the fly. And I really should have trademarked that name. <laughs> so now I have a macro that has a plus two modifier in it. And I'm going to drag the sword attack into it. And it'll ask me, do I want to merge them? And I'll say, yeah, I do. So now if I press this macro button, It'll do both. It'll add the plus two modifier and it'll roll the attack. Great, she hits. Okay, let's see if the troll parries. I know he's supposed to probably, couldn't parry twice in one roll, uh, but that's the only button that's working right now. Remember, this is the prototype. Yay, the troll failed his parry. So she's gonna do some damage. So over here is the damage. You know what? Uh, I'm gonna play with the extra effort rules to try to get a little extra damage on here. So I'm gonna go down here and say, uh, plus two damage mighty blow costs one fatigue point. And what that's gonna do is on the next roll, it'll add plus two to it, and then it'll subtract one from the fatigue of the character that made the roll. So here's Ilva and she has 11 fatigue and we're gonna do the damage. Let's see, we got 1d3 cut. Oh, great, plus two. So seven points of damage. You notice her fatigue is down one. So we'll apply that to the troll. Now the troll is currently at 27 hit points. 
It's got four points of armor in the torso. Uh, and afterwards we do four points of armor. Now, a lot of times you don't want the characters to see how much damage is applied to your NPCs. So instead of applying the injury, I'm actually going to select apply injury quietly. And that does apply the injury and you can see it in the chat log, but you notice it's a different color. That's a private message to me and not broadcast to the whole group. So they know they hit, but they don't know how much damage they did. Keeps them on their toes. Okay, we'll go to the next round. Well, Lady Serial, uh, well, let's see. She's gonna make a will roll uh, to see if she can do anything. And no, so she basically passes out on the ground. Thank you very much. There is so much more to the GURPS game aid, but I can't cover it here. If you're interested, check out some of the links in the description. And that brings me back to the Bestiary and Enemies compendium. Can you see how much time that saved me? If you play GURPS and Foundry, then it is definitely worth it. And if you don't play GURPS and Foundry, why not? My own GURPS group alternates between face-to-face -face and online sessions. We find that role-playing is more fun face-to-face, -face, but if we know there's gonna be combat, we find it's much easier online. The damage calculator alone is worth the cost of Foundry. So consider backing the Bestiary. It's the first of its kind. And as always, thank you for watching.